Hi, VC, uh, Dave back with you. Uh, it's another absolutely, well, we're having another kind of a heat wave here again, so, um, but it's kind of late in the evening, so I've, I've, I've waited for the sun to go down a bit because um, uh, it can get rather hot uh, in here on these hot days, but, um, okay, some very interesting stuff to show you this time. Some CDs, some vinyl, very first find. Um, this is something which I just happened to spot in a window. Now there's a charity shop or stroke thrift shop uh, not too far from me where I've previously made some very interesting pick up. They, they hold monthly window sales basically where they have the stuff that they're going to sell on a set day. They have it on display in their window for about a month at a time. Now, most of these window sales are themed, like sometimes they have vinyl sales. Now, this one, they were selling art materials, like books on art, uh, painting sets, um, some, you know, poster reproductions of, of painting, of famous painter paintings, etc. But uh, I, just ha I was just passing and had a look in the window out of curiosity, and I did an absolute double take at what at first appeared to be a book, uh, sitting in the middle of this display, but uh, it was no book. Um, well, the very fact that I'm showing it to you means that, um, okay, um, okay, I might as well show it. Uh, Can the Lost Tapes, 1968 to 1975. Uh, yes, this is a box set. Uh, this is a CD box set. This also came out on vinyl, and this was released uh, only in 2012. Um, it's basically um, yeah, okay. I, 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 okay. Um, yeah. Obviously, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And um, yesterday was the window sale, so um, I set my alarm clock early. But um, the 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 shop opens at ten o'clock, by the way. But um, I set my alarm clock early because I just thought, well, you know, there's going to be a lot of people queuing to want to get this. But um, I overslept, um, my alarm went off, I overslept and suddenly realised, well, uh, I'd overslept by about an hour, so I just pulled on my clothes and ran down there. It's about five minutes walk, but much so, to my surprise, when I got there, uh, I found I was the first person there, so I was first in the queue. Now, the guy, one of the people who works in there, um, was opening up, and... Um, I was just chatting to him a bit, and I said to him, well, I'm really only here for one particular item, and uh, I described it to him, I just said, you know, and he said, oh, well, seeing as you're the only person here, he said, I might as well just let you in, and you can pick it up, so, <laughs> delighted, I, I didn't have to queue um, until 10 o'clock, so, I got it for 3 euros and 50 cents, so, an absolute bargain, um, okay, so, a little more detail on this. So this was released on um, Spoon Records, and it's basically um, previously unreleased material spanning. Well, actually, it says 68 to 68 to 75, but actually there is material uh, going as far as 1977 on this. Um, superb booklet, and I absolutely love the design. Uh, the whole design of the thing basically looks like a sort of um, there's all this kind of emphasis on reels of um, reel to reel tape kind of imagery. Um, okay, after coming, uh, I'll just show you that the um, CDs, uh, three CDs. I've only listened to the first one so far. Uh, the first one uh, heavily feature is pretty much from the Malcolm Mooney uh, era, so um, yeah, absolutely amazing stuff, which had just lain in the archives for uh, for years before finally being re re released in this package. Um, yeah, I, I remember I had this on my want list when it came out. I remember I watched the vinyl edition of it. The vinyl edition, I think, is like a five disc box set. Um, that is now insanely expensive. Uh, this this can be picked up for about well, I suppose about fifteen to twenty euros, but um, 
uh, yeah but to get it for three euros and fifty cents is just superb and it was something that um, I don't think I spotted it in the wild or um, my local independent didn't have it or I, I haven't I haven't I don't think I've seen it anywhere uh, in the wild since its release but um, yeah it's just very fortuitous that um, I, I don't know that it must have, obviously in the shop they thought of some kind of well, I mean, it's well. I mean, once you open it, it's obvious that it is a CD box set. But it clearly came in this donation of art materials, and I suppose they just didn't know what to do with it and put it out with those items. So, um, yeah, and it seems you, you could easily miss it actually in the window because, um, unless I suppose, unless you are familiar with Can, but um, yeah, absolutely delighted to to, uh, to pick that up. So Can. The Lost Tapes, uh, 1968 to 1975. Um, now, moving on. Um, now, my next item uh, is vinyl. Well, I'll, I'll go into a bit into the details uh, behind that as well. Uh, last weekend, um, I visited, I, I traveled down to visit my parents. Um, uh, they live in a rural area, and um, while I was down there, I was visiting a local fair. There's a town nearby, where I, where near where I grew up, where there's a monthly, um, I suppose, well, really it's kind of technically an agricultural fair, but it is basically like a big open air flea market in the in the town in the main town square. Um, I've picked up some stuff. Some there has been some veller, vinyl sellers there in the past, so I. I thought I'd, I'd go check it out, see if, and lo and behold, there was a guy there with a, with a little pile of vinyl on the ground. Um, had a look through it. It seemed to be pretty much almost all um, Rod Stewart, but this caught my eye. As soon as I saw the name Shirley Collins, uh, I knew, yeah, I had to grab this. Shirley Collins and the Albion Country Band. Uh, for those not familiar with Shirley Collins, um yeah she's a, a pretty much a, a british folk veteran um she started out in the late 50s early 60s she collaborated with the likes of um davy graham and she's kind of spanned you know the kind of you know folk revival kind of into the kind of folk rock thing in the late 60s early 70s and she's collaborated with the likes of um more re in more recent times with the likes of uh, David Tibet of Current 93 but this is an album which came out in 1971 and it's called No Roses uh, it came out on a label called um, Pegasus now this is actually a second pressing um, the first press had a different label so this is a second pressing from 1972 um, I got this for four euros um, now I think the reason why the seller had pri priced it so low is I think he'd mix he was mixing her up with um oh Judy Collins now Judy he said something like about Shirley Collins he was saying oh she's an an American folk singer which, which of course she's not she's British but uh, I I think for that reason yeah he must have been mixing her up with with, with Judy Collins who whose albums are quite common you know you see her around quite a lot but Shirley Collins is very hard to find in the wild and this um, yeah this even though this is a second pressing this goes for yeah it goes for around 40 to 50 euros and it's an absolutely superb condition and it looks barely played uh, really really clean vinyl uh, some great the great lineup on this album um, uh, uh, Danny uh, Richard Thompson is on this. Um, uh, Ash Ashley Hutchings, uh, Dave Mattax. Um, yeah, so a, a lot of um, oh yeah, Nick Jones as well. Uh, a lot of fi figures, um, you know, kind of associated with the um, you know English folk music of the sixties and seventies. Uh, yeah, it's a superb folk rock album. Um, the best track on this is is a track uh, called the, the Murder of Maria Martin. 
yeah so if you're a fan of like fairport convention or um you know it's, it's very much in that kind of vein and um pr pretty rare album to find in the wild and i i can't believe that i picked it up for such a <laughs> a bargain so it's sort of two bargains two kind of you know kind of rare items or you know I don't know, I, I, maybe the word grail is probably, but certainly, um, yeah, okay. Um, while I was down there, oh, oh also, uh, it, also in this, at this fair, there was a, um, a, a guy I know, I've, I've bought a lot of stuff off him in the past, he's a professional, um, uh, record seller, and, um, he said, I was speaking to him, and he said he, uh, he goes there every month, so um, I've, I've bought a lot of stuff off. He comes up to the city sometimes to some of the record fairs up here, so I've bought a lot of stuff off him. And I bought just one record off him, and that is um, uh, Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, uh, Unconditionally Guaranteed. And um, I was aware beforehand that this isn't one of Captain Beefheart's most kind of acclaimed albums so I was kind of taking a bit of a chance on it. Uh, this came out originally in 1974. Uh, this is a reissue from the 80s, from 85? Is it 85? Yeah, 85 I think on Virgin. So um, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a great album, it's not a bad album either. Um, it, there's one superb track, the opening track, uh, upon the upon the my oh my. Um, uh, there's a great live version of that, by the way, uh, on YouTube uh, on a on a TV show called The Old Grey Whistle Test. And um, the rest of the album, yeah, it's it's a bit of a shock to listen to. It, it's quite commercial by um, B part standards, you know. It's not a bad album, but um, um. It's you know it's kind of difficult to kind of adjust to you know there's a lot of love songs you know which is something you you know you don't really associate with Captain Beefheart but um, yeah okay um, anyway also while I was down there oh yeah oh yes um, also in the fair uh, there, there was lots of people selling kind of brick and brack and uh, books and clothes and uh, I was just browsing through one guy's books see a lot of books. And I made this very interesting discovery. Uh, the Man Who Fell to Earth. Uh, yeah, so um, by Walter Tevis. And this is this is an, an edition from 1976, which was released to tie in with the movie, of course, which came out that year. And that cover image, that grey cover image of Bowie there, that's the same image that was basically used in on the cover of, of the album Low. So it's like, obviously, it's, I think it's a photographic still from the film, which, uh, this version of it, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a great, great cover image with that image, you know, as well, of the lake in the background. And, um, yeah, so, uh, an interesting find uh, as well. Uh, now, I, I hit a couple of charity shops in the town. Uh, the town is called Bantry, by the way. Um, while I was there, I was just there for a few hours. And um, made a couple of interesting discoveries in two different charity shops. First off, I found these two cassettes. Uh, they were ten cent each. Now they're bootleg Metallica cassettes, which somebody record, which somebody made their own recording of Metallica at a live show when they played Dublin in 1999. That was part one and part two. And they've um, done their own kind of DIY um, uh, covers there. And uh, there's no actual song list. Uh, I haven't played these yet, by the way. I haven't. Um, I've, between the, I've so much stuff to play, I've picked up so much stuff, but I, a lot of it I haven't had the time to listen to. Uh, but yeah, very interesting um, finds. Only 10 cent each. Um, another, another. I made this find in another charity shop, and this was fifty cents. This is a Genesis, two Genesis albums on one cassette, and um, 
Trespass, which I already have on vinyl, and um, Foxtrot, which I don't. Um, yeah, so I think this is possibly from the 80s. It, it doesn't give a um, doesn't give a date, but it's got that 80s virgin um, um, logo there. So yeah, really, really nice little find there. Um, um, yeah, I have played this um, uh, Foxtrot. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's an album which um, I, I'd never listened to it in its entirety, but um, yeah, it's kind of um, yeah Peter Gabriel era Genesis. Uh, kind of for years, I kind of um, had ne negative connotations towards Genesis, specifically because of you know their 80s. Oh, but that was pretty much for years all all that I knew them for. But um, yeah, really really nice little find there. Okay. Oh yes. Um, this is another. This was something I picked up just before I got on the bus to go down to my hometown. Uh, there's a bus here, and uh, the, uh, another charity shop near the bus station, and I picked up, before I uh, grabbed up my bus, I, I, I picked up this. Um, Stargazer, Cosmic Fusion and Interstellar Jazz. And this is on a label, a label called Harmless. Um, but uh, yet, this has the likes of Sun Ra, um, Dexter Oneself, a theme from the planets, uh, Donald Byrd, uh, Herbie Hancock, uh, Woody Shaw, and um, oh yeah, Sun Ra. There are other worlds they have not told you of. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything with Sun Ra on it is um, uh, definitely uh, worth grabbing. So uh, didn't have to hesitate there. I just I'll just go briefly through some other CDs. I've picked up a lot of vinyl as well lately, but um, there would be far too much to show, so I'm going to leave that for another video. I'll just quickly go through some other CDs which I've picked up in various charity shops. Or um, uh, Now, this is something I picked up at another kind of a jumble sale kind of a thing. Um, Marvin Gaye, uh, the very best of Marvin Gaye. And uh, this is actually CD, a double CD. Plus, it's got a bonus disc, um, DVD bonus disc of a live show from 1980. So, uh, yeah, so it's got all his, um, basically his greatest hits. Nice little booklet there. So, um, yeah, very, very nice find. Um, oh, something else I picked up recently in a charity shop. Uh, May Blitz. Um, SN 1970. This is a May Blitz. So, oh, excuse me. They're one of the bands on the Vertigo label. Um, this is a live show from 1970. And um, yeah, listen to this. It's um, like the opening track, but um, uh, there's too many kind of long solos. And, like they'll be kind of intermittent. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's 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 fine. Um, wouldn't be crazy about it. But, uh, you know, it's kind of, I don't know what you call it, it's kind of hard rock, sort of deep purplish, perhaps. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Pierre Boulet conducting um, Ravel. Oh, yeah, Ravel, uh, Ravel, the Piano Concertos, and Piano by Christian Zimmermann. And this is on the um, uh, Deutsche Grammophon label. Which is a very fine label indeed when it comes to uh, classical. Um, yes, a couple of other interesting finds I made recently. Um, Ennio Morricone. Uh, Pis uh, yeah, uh, hard to pronounce title. Uh, Pis Pis Delico Gelslistico. Now this is actually a compilation of some of Ennio Morricone's 60s and late 60s and early 70s soundtracks, uh, many of which have a distinctly kind of psychedelic um, flavor. Uh, there's the music from the bird with the crystal plumage, which I that was Dario Argento movie, plus a lot of other movie, a lot of Italian movies, many of which I've never heard of or I've never seen. But there's some absolutely fantastic, kind of lesser known um, Ennio Morricone um, soundtracks in here. Uh, this is on yeah it's on cherry red uh records and i think it's from i don't know maybe the 
mid noughties but yeah I picked this up in a charity shop uh, so that was a really nice find and I, at the same time as I picked that up I picked up this as well uh, this is um soundtrack to the movie Crash by Mark Isham uh, yeah there's two movies called Crash this is the more recent one it's not the one based on the J.G. Ballard novel uh, this movie came out in the mid noughties I think 2005 yeah but this is a nice really nice um, kind of ambient flavoured soundtrack by Mark Isham who has done some um, really good um, soundtracks down through the years Okay, that's it. Um, gonna leave it at that. So um, very, very pleased with, very pleased with this in particular, uh, and uh, and this. So I think you know, uh, two very, very lucky um, finds uh, indeed. So I'll have more vinyl next time. So uh, thanks very much for watching, everybody, and have a great weekend.